Okay, so in this here video, we're going to start off by using Scratch, and I'm going to show you how to make a really, really simple uh, 2D Kong game. Um, first thing that we want to do in Scratch is delete these sprites. Uh, the overview of Scratch is this here is your playing area. Uh, it's 480 by 360. Um, here, you see your dialog box houses all your current sprites being used in the game. And each sprite has a set of scripts that you can use and at least one costume. And you can also use sounds along with that there um, sprite. All this scripting is contained over here, and they all have different categories for motion, the actual control of the script, look of your uh, sprite, sensing, sound, operators for doing mathematical calculations, uh, pen tool, which we do not really use, and variables as well. So if you want to make a variable that will change throughout the game, like a score counter or anything like that. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is delete this here sprite. So we'll just right click on it and delete. So we've got an empty game now. So this pawn game is going to have a ball and a paddle. Uh, first thing we want to do is we want to paint that ball. Okay, mine is going to be very, very simple. Obviously, you could uh, go into Photoshop and create uh, a document in there. Um, it would be a lot more detailed. And then you could import it into Scratch uh, if you save it as a PNG. So I'm going to click on this here circle tool. I'm going to hold Ctrl and Shift so I can get a perfect sphere. Something like that. The bigger the ball is, the easier the game's going to be. So I'm going to make mine uh, relatively small. Okay. And I'm going to place it where I'd like the ball to start off with. So somewhere up the top uh, middle. And then I'm going to go to my control. I'm going to say when this green flag is clicked, so that's the start of the game. I want something to happen, and that something is I'm going to tell the ball to go to minus 8 in the X and 1, 4, 8 in the Y. So that is that exact position. If I was to move it down there and go on to control and back into motion, you can see the value of go to X and Y is actually changed to that value, so it's a handy feature. So again, if I press on the green flag, it should pop up there. Next thing I want to do is change the direction of the ball. So at the minute, it's pointing left to right. I'm going to put it down at a kind of 45 degree angle, something like that. So when the ball moves, it's going to move diagonally across the game area. And again, I'm going to set that in motion. So I'm going to go to Control. I'm going to say when clicked. I'm going to give it a forever statement. So it's forever going to do whatever is con contained inside this area. And I'm going to say if on edge, I want it to bounce. So it's on the edge here. It's going to bounce around. And I want it to move. Uh, 10 steps at a time. So it's going to be moving 10 steps and then whenever it hits the edge it's going to bounce around. You can see that in motion when I press the green flag. Okay, so we've got that done. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is create a new sprite. And this is going to be my panel. Again, you know, you could do this in a lot more detail, but I'm going to simply create it in the paint editor contained in Scratch. Again, the smaller you make this, the harder the game is going to be. Something like that. I'm going to put that in position. Again, I'm going to make a, uh, a script for this. So when the green flag is clicked, again, it's going to go to that position. The next script I'm going to create for the paddle is when that is clicked forever, change or set X to, so you can set X to a value, but I want it to follow the actual X value of the mouse cursor. So if I go into sensing, you can see there's a mouse X. So if I drag that into the value of set X and I press play, you can see that it's following the mouse now. Okay, back to our ball sprite. Um, if these find, if you find that your scripts are getting messy, you can right click in here and just go to clean up as well. Um, I'm going to go to a new control. So Scratch has got an inbuilt. Um, if on edge bounce, but it doesn't have one um, really made for like if it bounces off and all sprites, so we're going to have to make one. And we're going to use a forever if. Okay, so this is different from forever. Forever happens all during the game, but this here is only going to happen if, and it's if it's touching sprite one, which I'll rename as ball. Also rename this sprite two as paddle, just to make it easier for ourselves. So if it's touching the paddle, uh, it's going to do something. And that there is point in direction. 
So at the minute it's pointing direction 90 degrees and we don't want that to happen every time. So what we're saying is we're going to have it do a 180 minus its actual direction. And that should work. So you can see it's actually pointing off the paddle now. But we want a bit of variation in where it's going to go because it's making it a bit easy. So <coughs> If I go to operators and drag out a pick random and motion and a turn is 15 degrees, I can put pick random in there and I'll put that to minus 20 to 20. So that's either going to add in somewhere between minus 20 and 20 degrees uh, to that direction as well. So it's going to make it slightly random. Again, press play. So you can see it's going off at different angles now. And it's going to make the game more enjoyable. New sprite again. Uh, this time I'm going to call it red. And this here is going to be our death sprite. So if I drag that across the bottom. And then put that at the bottom of our level. And again, new control. When flag is clicked, move here. So we want whenever the ball touches that the game's going to be over. So we're going to do that simply at the start and then we're going to add in um, like a kill screen. So if we go to the ball, we go when clicked, forever if, touching again, so touching we'll call that kill. So forever if the ball is touching the kill sprite, we can have the control of stop all. So this is going to stop every script and every sprite. So it's basically going to end the game. So if that touches that, you can see it's now stopped every script. So that's the basics of our game. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add a bit of gameplay into it, a bit of competition by adding in a variable. I'm going to make a variable. Uh, you can make a variable for all sprites or just this one. So I'm going to make it for everyone. I'm going to have time. And what we're going to do is, you could do this in any sprite, but I'm going to use uh, just a ball one. You could even use the stage one now. I'm going to have a control, okay, uh, when flag is uh, clicked. And this here is going to set time to zero. So every time it starts the game, it's going to set it to zero. And then we're going to have a forever. And we're going to make it wait one second. And we're going to change time by one. So for every second, it's going to add a number on, or add a 1 onto the time. So we'll give that a go. Until it ends. Okay, uh, we're going to add a new sprite in. This is going to be our end screen. I'm going to color it black, and I'm just going to use white writing. Add in some text, and it's just simply going to be game over. There we go. Okay, so the control for this is again, we want a motion, we want it to go to there every time, just in case we move it by mistake. And we also want it to looks wise hide. Yeah. If we go to the kill script in our ball, uh, we can send out a broadcast whenever it actually hits the red line, the kill line. So if I go to control, I can tell to broadcast new the message is going to be that. So it's going to send out this information to every sprite. I'm going to also put a wait in there. One second. Maybe the last point three. And in the game over sprite, I'm going to say down here when I receive death, looks wise, show. So if I press the green flag now, 
once the ball hits the red, it should bring up the game over screen. You can also add in some sound effects, so whenever the ball hits the paddle, here, uh, we can add in a sound, so I'll import um, a laser sound. So I'll tell it, sound-wise, play the laser. <coughs> and again, you could do that, you could add a sound in there, so whenever it reads it, receives death, you could play a sound, um, like a game over sound, something like that. Also at the stage, um, we could make it more colorful, we could go to some backgrounds and import um, like some outdoor background, anything like that there, like a brick wall, just to make it more colorful. Um, you could also change the sprites, as I said, of the paddle and the ball and everything like that there. Uh, to make it harder, you could actually duplicate the ball sprite. So if I duplicate that, and set that second one at a different angle. Um, it'll actually make the game a bit harder. So you've got two or more balls in there bouncing around.